So I heard Sam made a video. I heard Sam made a video. And I was going to watch it last night. And he actually tagged me in it. But I decided to not watch it. I thought I'd start my stream reacting to Sam's video. Because I heard it's good. I heard it's good. He actually DM'd it to me, so I know he wants me to see it. Okay. Chat. Let's start with our stream today with Samino's save Overwatch patch. Samino and how to save Overwatch slash Overwatch 2. No, uh, as time has kind of aged, I think it's pretty safe to say that a lot of my takes on how ineffective balance patches would be in the long term over the last two years has been proven to be true, right? We still see a lot of double shield. We still see Bap and Brig be the best supports in the game. And we still... And Zen. Don't forget Zen, Sam. Bap, Zen. I mean, sorry, Brig Zen is the number one right now. Still see the main tank role kind of non-existent. Um... <laughs> Can I get enough in chat? Um, dude... Dude, look at his face. Look at his fire. fucking face, dude. He looks so sad. Sick for the right. Sam days. looks that Things sad over the tank roll maybe not existing. Maybe Imagine how sad I am on the inside and people give me shit. People go, oh, dude, you're not always smiling and laughing. How the fuck am I supposed to be smiling and laughing when I'm literally getting slapped in the face every fucking day? So, let's start this off. Um, first thing I would do, step one, vault brig. I'll let him speak on this, but this is actually good. This hero has proven to be game-breaking as long as she can stack healing the way she does whilst peeling at the same time. So, for now, we just, we just need to put her in the vault and see how the game functions without her. Now, you might think this is a little outrageous, but... Competitive games actually do this quite often. And with the uh, Rainbow Six Siege background, we actually had it happen in Siege. It should have happened with original Blackbeard, but it didn't. But the community and the dev team learned. It learned from that experience. So when, I forget what the operator's name was. It was when I was done playing professionally. Uh, the defensive, shield, with the defensive uh, operator with a riot shield um was game breaking because so basically if you don't know rainbow six siege there was a, a defensive operator that had a massive shield so she couldn't shoot through the shield but she could tase you at clash clash could stun you right she could stun you but she could also stand like like let's say you blew a doorway right like, like let's say you put a thermite on a wall blew a wall blow, uh, blew it up and that was your entry point into the into the defensive position. She could walk up and go stand in the doorway, and now you just don't get in. She was a walking barrier. Plus, CC. Plus, she had a great secondary. It just took time to swap to it. Yo, cats, thank you so much for the five gifties. Jack, you're just for cats. Nova, thanks for the team for two months. And Derek is boosted with the prime for eight months. Appreciate you guys, seriously. Hey, thank you so much. Um, but what they did though is in competitive play, they vaulted the hero for a little while because they couldn't figure out how to balance them. They kept like nerfing stuff and they couldn't do it. So they vaulted the hero and, or the operator. They could still play it in quick play. So anyone who's a casual player would still be able to play the, the, the operator that they wanted. And I think that would be a really good idea for, for competitive because competitively Brig breaks the game. But there's a lot of people who love Brig and love the lore and love how she plays and stuff like that. But they're much more casual players. Even, even I, I would I would argue there are competitive players that think Brig is good, but you they are very much in the minority. And at high and high level players, it's almost unanimous that Brig breaks the game. So listen, let's all take the L, put her in the vault. I agree with Sam on this. Competitively for ranked, leave her in everything else so people can still play the hero. But from a ranked experience, it's absolutely Thanks. a good take. Brick because was a band as of right now, put on a deep cut, vault her 100%. Now, there's not a healthy way to have this character be in the game. 
a lot of low rank players I, I say this all the time where I say Brig is broken and that's why she should get a rework because she's meant to be an entry level character that is a lot like Moira that you should see this kind of curve on her we see um, this is how you maintain fair play in a game like this right you have a skill to reward curve right yep so you have R for reward also here. can you guys see where I'm sitting yeah, you guys are still. Uh, we'll go up here. And you have skill in terms of like SR and like I, th I think I actually need to draw SR here, right? So the volume is low. I have it maxed out. Like my volume is literally maxed out. So here's Moira. We'll have her in her little magenta color. So the amount of reward you get, the higher up you go in ranks, is the draft should look like this. Like there should be a definitive drop off to a character that doesn't require a lot of mechanics, right? But the reality is with Brigida, who should have a chart that looks like this, she actually looks like this. Right? And fair. That's very fair. Reason for that is Briggs at her best when she's denying damage, right? And she has inspire up. Inspi getting inspire up and staying alive is something that takes brain power and a lot of game sense to do. And your team needs to be kind of stacked. Which is different from old break. Old break was just exist, bl bl turn brain off. Everyone used to say brain dead hero, brain dead hero. And that was true. It has changed since then, which is a good thing. But she's still a super valuable. Near you. So she gets her most output when she's at high level play. Because there's not only is there more damage coming in, but you can play safer. There's better peel for her. And higher SR players understand that you can't play her as a melee character. You play your flails. And it's very misleading to low-level players because they think she's a melee character. So they'll run in and feed with her instead of surviving and call the hero shit when the reality is the hero's not shit. So she's a very misleading character. And if anything, it sh it, that's even more reason to rework her. Her masses, like most players. The players like that she's supposed to be made good for suck with her and they don't understand how to play her and neither is she going to be her most effective in those ranks. So when people in low ranks say, well, Brig is bad, why would you vault her? That's all the more reason to vault her until we can figure out a way to helpfully implement her so her learning curve looks like this, like Moira's, instead of what it is right here. And actually, people say, well, we don't want her to be useless just like Moira. The main reason Moira is useless right now is because Brig just is better. Brig hard counters coalescence just by fucking healing just a little bit, right? And if you coalescence, you end up just feeding her rally. She also counters six-man rush and die because her heal aura is so big. So if you nerf Brig, Lucio actually becomes a very good pick again. And that also hard enables Moira. So you'll see what you saw in October, which is a balance between Mercy, Ana, and Lucio Moira or Lucio Ana comps, in which case the game feels way more open. And I think this is one of the most important things. I'm going to let him keep going. I don't want to keep cutting him off. But what is one of the most important things... And it happens actually in Overwatch ranked a lot. In ranked, people will pick something and blame it on that. They'll be like, that DPS player, not getting enough picks. All his fault. Well, you're not wrong. But at the same time, though, that's not it. Maybe that DPS player isn't getting any picks because nothing's peaking him. Nothing's peaking him because they're not forcing anybody to move. They're defensively unable. They're, they're locked in. Tanks aren't pushing them out of the way or they're not taking space. Or, alternatively, the tanks that can't take space because the supports aren't healing the tanks well enough, so they can't actually press the angles. There's a lot of other answers. Plus, it could be something as like, we're playing Ryan Zarya and Numbani first. Like, the tanks can walk to point and stand there. That does nothing about their team sitting on high ground. Like, there are always more than one answer. There's always three, four, five, six answers of why something's wrong, and the same thing happens in balance. When you say something is broken, for example, I'm a big uh, a proponent of, of Discord being broken. I think Zen Discord Orb is broken. Now hear me out. The reason why Zen Discord Orb is broken is because Brig exists. Brig is, Zen is supposed to be a high I, 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 damage I, 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 glass I, 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 cannon. I didn't even, even know what's going on. Yo, well, thank you so much for the five gifties again, cats. Yo, Jack, let me show some love with some hearts and some blankies of the five gifties. Appreciate it, seriously. Thanks. Um, After devs see this video, Next patch, they make Discord Orb do damage over time and Voltana. Shut the fuck up. Anyways, the reason it, it's fire. it's so damaging and Zen does Seven so much damage, off. it's supposed to be a glass cannon. But Brig doesn't make it a glass cannon. It makes Zen a fortress. 
So it removes the thing that's supposed to be its weakness. The weakness no longer exists by the counter pick of Brig. If you remove Brig, Zen's fine again. Zen's easy to punish. Tracers can kill him. Winston can kill him. Uh, Diva can kill him. Like, there's so many things that can go do it, but Brig makes that not possible. That what he's saying here is why Moira is bad and Lucio is bad is because Brig does those jobs better. If you remove that hero, all of their value skyrockets again. It's the same thing. It's the same thing like when they buffed Ryan. When Ryan was really buffed, Rush became meta again. Rush became meta. Brig was terrible. Um, it was Ryan, Diva, um, Hanzo, Cass, uh, Bap, Lucio, right? Was was the was the rush meta. You had the Hanzo for the shield break slash high damage, Cass for the stun slash good damage over time. Bap had more healing and, and, and with his more immortality drone. And Lucio, you had beat, which would help with the grab, or not with grab, sorry, with bomb, uh, or if the team gets shattered, um, and, and was just like the speeder, right? Brig sucked because Brig couldn't sit back. Like Rush would walk in and initiate on her. That's why Brig was bad at that time. But there's Brig had to be literally pushed into the ground, and Rush had to be so OP to break her. If you want the game to be entirely balanced, Brig will just an annihilate all the other things until she is at the top, unless one of those things is too powerful. So what we're saying here is that there's no low, no one answer for why something is strong or not strong most chances but actually brig is one of the things that has an overarching fuck up for a lot of things that are bad Open. so step one or good just to get the game back on an evil playing field is to get brig the fuck out of the game she she literally we have nerfed the hero 19 times jeff goodman josh no and the balance team I'm have nerfed fire. Brigida 19 Quality times education. and she still dominates the game 19 so it, it, if that tells you anything let's reevaluate 19 dude, like these guys at a, at a fortune 500 company tried to fix this 19 times so violet we gotta change it up right we're in the middle Definition of break slander so is trying the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results albert einstein that is what we've done with brig it doesn't work it's a sunk cost we Sorry to cut Sam off again, because it's going to be a long time. <sighs> when he says 19 nerfs, not many people know about this. A lot of OGs know about this, but not like newer age players. Let me tell you a quick story. When original Brig was out, original Brig was so broken and so easy to play. By the way, she had like 600 shield. Uh, she had Arissa shield on her thing. Did one-shot tracer combo, uh, bash through shield, so you could, quote, bash shatter. That was a thing. You could be Ryan sitting there shield, he just should go, boom, and she would fall, you would just, you'd fall over. Like, there was nothing you could do. It was unblockable. That's not the story. The story is, was within a week and a half of Brick coming out, a player rose to 4,400 SR fire. from 2100. It was a guy named Nick, N I K. This guy went from 2100 SR completely through all seasons, never moved, has been bronze to, to gold since season one. Went in season 10 when Brig was released in one week from 2100 to 4400. Was higher rated than me at the time. Off of I just even, I even know, playing Brig. I didn't even, even, even know what's going on. Yo, cats, what's going on? Why are you going crazy today? Another five gifties? That's 15 total. Can we show some love for cats? 15 total gifties. Thank you, thank you so much. Seriously, appreciate it. Much love, dude. Um, now, I don't know who can go back. I don't know if the clip still exists because the DMC apocalypse, but XQC at the time actually was part of what discovered him because XQC was still playing Overwatch at the time. And as you see, got him in his game, was like, who the hell is, I've never seen this guy before, what? And saw the difference between the SRs. I was like, what the heck? And asked him, what, how did that happen? And he, because he thought he was boosted, and he was like, no, I just played Brig. Now, this became a problem, because as Brig got a nerf or two, the guy started to flex and play other things, and started to play, like, Moira and whatnot. This was a silver-gold player playing 
other supports in GM because he was like, I'm here. It's my SR. But that that wasn't true. It was, I, I got him on my team one game where he tried to play uh, Ana. I, I don't think I got healed the whole game. Now, that's not the point. That's just a, an error of history. Just to give you like a history lesson. But regardless, though, the hero was so fundamentally broken just by picking the hero, you could go to GM. You could go all the way to top 500, which top 500 at the time was not split roles, so it was actually much higher. Top 500 now is like 4K. Top 500 then was like high 4,300 at the bottom of top, top 500. Regardless, though, 19 nerfs later. We got to Sorry, I'll let Sam talk. So step one, remove Brig. <laughs> And how we change her, there's no, like, people want a definitive answer, but the also, reality is there is not a definitive answer yet. You have to wait and see how the game functions without her in it, and then find a way to implement her in a healthy way after the fact. Immortality field changed to damage reduction. 30 to 50%, we'll say. You had to start really even, strong. I didn't even, 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 even know what's going on. Okay. The right, I'm gonna pause it there for a sec. Yo, Bob Hog, thanks for the five gifted as well. Uh, Screaming Unicorn, thanks for the team one for five months, and Eve May, thanks for the team one for fifty months. Chat, can we show some love? And I sign Nick with a team one for seven months. Well. Can we show some love really quick? I'm gonna go blow my nose because I'm getting the sniffles really quick, and I don't want to be sniffling the entire time. So give me Daddy one. flat sits time. Love the content, dude, and yes, I am a pro lurker. No free feedies. No free feedies. <sighs> okay. Anyways. Thank you. Only feeds when. <sighs> Fuck off. Uh, ben, thanks for the two one for nine months, by the way. Appreciate it. Reason All right, let's go. Fire on fire. The reason for this is I, when, when I, I had the chance to ask Jeff Goodman directly about if he has plans to change abilities, problem abilities like Brig and Bap and Mortality Field, he said that the reasoning for it, this was in the Creator Lightning Round AMA, was that on the flip side of the coin, people were saying that ultimates were too strong. So we wanted to add an option to negate ultimates and have more counter ability to ultimates in the game. The problem is, right... If you add an ability, right? Let me let me define this. Let, let, let's define something here. Let's define ultimates and cooldowns. So I want to let him finish this because I actually kind of disagree nowadays. Actually, uh, Crixus thinks the prime Bob Hawkins and like it's so do appreciate. But we'll have a a value bar graph here where you have general abilities here, give this much reward, right? And then ultimates will make them blue, give this much reward, right? Yep. And because this ability, because ultimates give, because ultimates give more value, they take more time to charge, right? You have to spend more time, probably two or three fights, depending on the character, charging the ultimate in order to do it. I didn't even know what's going on. If you make a cooldown, red is going to be immortality field. If you make a cooldown, give as much value as an ultimate in the game. All right, I'm gonna stop him right there. Yes, what the shit? He's in for another five gifted, you're crazy. Chad, show slow for cat for the five gifted. Again, appreciate it. Crix this things in the prime for five months as well. Okay, I know what he's gonna say here. And before people already start, people are gonna say not all, not all ultimates are the same. And I agree. Not all ultimates have the same type of value. So either charge rates are different. But I also think there should be a balance that if their cooldowns are really strong, their ultimate should be pretty weak. Or if their ultimate's really strong, their cooldown shouldn't be that strong. Bap has both really strong. Let's say that first. You're not actually reducing the impact of ultimates in the game. 
in fact, you're increasing it because you've added a cooldown that gives ultimate level value every 25 seconds instead of every minute to minute and a half. And what that ends up doing is it then compromises the mid fight of the game where you would set up engages to get value. Right, and that's what made Overwatch so much fun. There was all these different ways to win a mid fight before the ult fight came up. But what you end up doing, Mr. Goodman, is you end up putting ultimate level value in every fight. And that doesn't take away from ultimates, that actually adds on to ultimates. So instead of nerfing the problematic ultimates across the board, which would be a good way to nerf ultimates if you were concerned, you've just replaced all of the CD exchanges, which made Overwatch so brilliant to get countered by ultimate level value way more consistently. It's not healthy for the game. It's incredibly infuriating to play against, and there's ways to implement it in a much healthier way, to which case it doesn't do this and make cooldowns ha have ultimate level value with the cooldown level timer. It's Alternative. Alternative. I agree with it, but alternative. I think that actually at this point... They no longer intend on Mortality Field to be an ultimate um, shutdown. Yes, it's used as one, but actually I feel like Immortality is used way more often to keep alive teammates that are about to go boom or low that low HP targets in the mid fight than like Transcendence, which you used to always save Transcendence for like Grav, right? Like you'd always save Trank for Grav or save Beat for Grav, right? You'd always save it. Like, even if people were low, you were like, nope, I'm saving it. Like, it's way more worth to save it because, you know, you at least have a fighting chance. Otherwise, you just L, immediate L. So, like, typically, you'll just, like, you'd kind of risk it. Like, okay, yeah, we'll lose a player or two, but we can maybe still fly, flip it, right? What I think, though, is in their mind, immortality is much used as a mid fight ability. I'm on fire. And the point of it is is because almost a necessary evil. Damage has become so strong in the game that needing an ability that literally keeps you from exploding is actually like so valuable that it's worth keeping. Now, I say that as a main tank player who's experienced the seventh level of hell, which is Zen Discord Orb, Brig, or BAP window. Cast Flash. Hanzo Storm Arrow. Hog Hook. And Arisa Pull. Or Sigma Rock or anything. Like all the CCs and all the high damage at once. And just watching your health par just go. Boop. And, and I played a game of Arisa the other day. Where I went up on high ground. I was jumping down. And I literally... Peek the high ground, I look down and throw my shield, and before my shield hit the ground at 450 HP, it disappeared. I was like, huh? Damage is actually off the charts nowadays in the game. The People have gotten so good at the game that they, over time, a lot of things, first off, there was already power creep. Originally in the game, people weren't as good, you know, people hadn't had as much time to de develop skills and team calls and stuff like that and understanding, like, how the game works. Time to kill was pretty high. As people got better and power creep, it's insane how fast people can go boom. What is power creep? Power creep is as you add new things to the game, you want them to be impactful. Old abilities that aren't as good need to be buffed to keep up with that new ability. As you add more or as you change them, that back end needs to go higher and higher to the point where that's too strong. And that's what causes like buffs and nerfs. <sighs> you want a good example of this? I always reference this. I think Winston is the key to Overwatch. Like over like Winston is the lock and key. If Winston is playable but not dominant in like ladder play, the game's in a good healthy spot. Why do I say that? Because if Winston did more damage than he does now, would be broken. Had more HP than he does now, would be broken. Genji's, you're actually, Genji would actually be a good Together, one too. We are um, I said I don't like when he's a blade bot. Hit GM tank and currently peak 4,063. 11 hours on Reinhardt and 3 on Sigma. Oh, nice, dude. Bonk. Um, 
Winston's one of those heroes that, like you you can't tune him because if you do he breaks. And also I hate I like Genji, but if Genji's a blade bot, I feel like nobody has fun. Uh, not even the Genji player. But Primal is a thousand HP, one thousand. When the game first came out, one thousand HP was a lot. I'm on fire! You know what I mean? You don't know if Genji wants the game to be balanced around where Genji's in good mid fight. Agreed. I also think the blade nerf was a little weird. I don't know why they did that. That kind of made it like kind of shitty. Feel like things of the prime appreciated. Um, I I think damage has just kind of gotten insane, and and. It's almost creating a mortality field as a necessary evil. It's not good for the game, but like there's almost no other option. And I hate that we're in that spot. So that's my big problem right now is I, I don't disagree. I think immortality field sucks, but it's like, what else do we have at this point to like keep people from exploding? Um, which I think is a totally different problem. Which by the way, for a while, Ball would easily get more shields than Winston had ult, and I thought that was the stupidest shit at the, whole, the entire time. <sighs> Rip off horrible, the band-aid. Horrible game design. And the brig, it's been two years. The, and we the still brig band-aid, which is a a, a small band-aid over a literal fucking like hacked up machete wound. Realized it. So step two, nerfing MO. Get it out of the game. It has no place in the game. And then the main tank role will open up tremendously. The game will open up. If you get rid of Bap and Briggs' most broken parts of their kits, the game will open up tremendously. We saw it happen last October. The reason why the game was so good last October was because Bap and Brig both had gotten nerfed and no one was playing them and the game Shocker felt amazing to play for every single role. All queue times went down across the board. I very rarely saw more than a two minute queue, two and a half minute queue on every role because everyone was willing to play everything because everything was fun. But now, you don't see that anymore. You see 10-minute DPS queue times. You see long tank queue times because everyone's just walked away from the game because the experience is bad, primarily because of those two abilities. This is actually a fantastic fucking point. I, for one, am kind of sick of seeing the once every quarter or once every half year or once every two fucking years, the player data where it's like, we had 10 million monthly logins. What does that mean? Does that mean 10 million monthly logins that were on the battle net? Does that mean they actually signed in? Did they actually play a game? How Can you tell how many of those are people just owning two, three, four, five accounts? There is no way in hell you can convince me that 10 million people actually play this game a month. Now, it's not possible because I know people that have like 25 accounts at this point. It ain't happening. One. Two. Is that like you pick like the best month of the year? It's like the Halloween event plus a drop event plus this plus like like are you picking the absolute best numbers and you're choosing all the casual numbers? Because there is no way in hell that if this game showed numbers like Steam, it would be anywhere close to what we've been told. I refuse to believe so, it. Second step. Thank you. They are counting Google field index to, supporters uh, login damage reduction field with the CD reduction. We're, we're, we're past the big problems, which is shocker. The support being that you count right? as a user. Um, we're past which, the big problems. That counts. Out. Wow. That count. Like what, what's, 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 let's see. Oh, I want to go play fucking COD or, or war zone. I, I count. Now we're getting into nitty gritty quality of life changes, right? Because after you nerf these two things, these are the things that hard, this hard force double shield, right? Immortality field is what hard forces double shield and window as well. And this True. hard force window is ridiculous rush out of the game. So these two things would make the game open up brilliantly. So quality of life changes. Let's see. And I hate to keep cutting Sam off. I really do. Like, first off, we got 33 minutes. We gonna be here a fucking while, but I don't know how much we're allowed to like talk about, but I think this part we're allowed to talk about. Forever ago, there was a conversation about like what direction they want to go with Overwatch 2. And I think part of it was actually on the broadcast too. So I think it's, we're fine. They said that they wanted to make the game more. Uh, what's the word? I didn't know. I don't know if they used the word brawly. But they wanted to make it more like up close. I'm going to use the word brawl. I'm going to use, I don't know if they use the word brawl. They use some other word. Um, but they wanted something like up close, like uh brawly type of content. You know what I mean? Um, that's like, I don't know. Like 
That's like their vision for Overwatch 2, right? But what we currently have is poke long range. And nothing is showing of changing that. And there's not an understanding of wanting to go in that direction anyways. So if they wanted a more brawl playstyle, wouldn't they know that these problems are keeping that from happening even in the current game, never mind in the next game. I don't know. It's because like reflectively, you would want the main game to reflect in some ways what the next game will look like, right? Proj speed buff storm arrow nerf. I'll go with that arrow count by one to two arrows, probably two and maybe a CD increase. Agreed. Agreed. Same. The goal of this is to make Hanzo more of a sniper rather than a spammer. Though this can can wait if we are unsure we want to do this to the hero. So that can wait. That's more of a quality of life change. Four. Yeah. Revert. Okay, let's get this down one more. I wanna I wanna oh, God. By the way, chat. I have some stuff I wanna show you, but it's gotta be a little bit. I will Remind me in like a, like a week. Oh, a week. Remind me in a week, and then we'll go back another week, and we'll see if it comes back, because there's stuff I want to show you, too. Reverts, Dragon Blade Damage Nerf. Dragon Blade can no longer be damage boosted. So the only reason Blade is broken is Shocker, because support and tank ultimates, the most powerful ultimates in the game, have always been that. Change breakpoints, and if you change breakpoints... You end up with things that are a little oppressive or a little broken. So if you have an ultimate that's too strong because of breakpoints, then make it so that the, it can't actually break those breakpoints. So the game still stays. Wait, didn't I just say this like not long ago? Like revert the yeah. I, I was just talking fair, about this. You have a lot more fair play, a lot more counterplay, which is what made the game so much fun. Five. We're gonna take a look at Echo next. Okay. Um, Echo can now can now die in duplicate. Reduce ult charge. Oh, I spelled that wrong. I am an idiot. Um, okay, reduce ult either. charge rate to compensate. You're looking retro. 20%. Everybody commented like on my that. video Whatever today. It's either 20% the Moira one. Or, it's in or Moira was spelled wrong. I don't remember nice what the was they gave her, but you can revert that now. And now it adds a lot more counterplay to duplicate, which just gives her so much life. Like now you die and duplicate. Smart, you're at risk. You know and why this is actually an amazing change? Is because... The amount of times I've seen echoes that just like they just whoo, they do the little they do their fly in literally get up close and personal and like they're two inches away from you they do their right click like oh yeah and then they go to left click you their one HP and they're like pause I'm now you so you have to fight them where they are now your character with all their cooldowns and you're like half HP because you just ate a fucking right click and a left click and they just go yeah fuck you now kill you use your ult and then right when they finish their ult they die and then they get all their cooldowns right they go Whoosh! and then fly away again like yeah, how's that fair counterplay to the game and we like counterplay in the game because that was, that's what makes Overwatch so much fun when there's win buttons in the game like Immortality Field or Brig no one really likes that, right? So you kind of have to wait. Um, you, you, you just, you know, it, it doesn't work. So, yeah, now we're going to move on. Let's see. Revert, Roadhog, 25% ult charge. We're done. Hey, sorry. I, I, sorry I keep doing this, but, like, I called... Someone go find some tweets from me from, like, six months ago. I called this six months ago. I said Hog is just too strong. Hog was strong when Rush was good. Like, Hog was good. Then they buffed his damage, and then they buffed the the the, the, the damage, I mean, the ult charge he gives. I'm just saying, I'm like, the reason Hog has not been good in the past is because you could just pick double shield and Hog went bye-bye. That's literally what happened. Like, someone go ask Six. The amount of fucking SR I stole from Six during double shield meta, like, like a year ago, like it didn't matter if he was amazing in Hog. If he got in my game and I picked the horse hero and Emon picked the Sigma hero, they're just, just you're fucked. The game's over, dude. You're just dead. That hasn't that has nothing to do with Hog being too weak. That has everything to do with the Arissa and Sigma being too strong. So they just kept buffing him. And now he's just fucking stupid. He's got a one shot. He's the only tank with a one shot like that. Other than Sigma Rock left click melee, which doesn't really happen that often. And Ryan Pin. 
What other tank has a one shot like that? Nobody. It's stupid. Plus, he has high damage. Plus, he has an effective not only 900 HP, but if he's he if, he, if like, okay, effectively he's got like 1200 HP because he's got uh uh he's got the 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 50% reduction while he's taking the breather, which is healing him for 300. Plus, he's got the incoming damage reduction. So if he has if he starts healing right as he's taking damage. Like let's say he start take he's like taking like hundred damage he starts healing the health bar is going up the reduction bar is now affecting the entire health pool you have to pump like twelve hundred damage into him to kill him that's stupid primal has a hundred a thousand damage with no absolutely zero reduction on it like what how do you how do you how do you justify that I don't understand reduction. And he doesn't even have to get close. Primal has to literally touch you. You have to. You literally have to get in their face. Like what? This chain. Oh, don't don't even start on Shatter Two. He's just straight up removed what made this hero punishable, at no skill cost of the player. Changes like this are really unhealthy yep. <sighs> for the game. If players want to get more value they they need to either be mechanically better or smarter positionally okay here we go now see i don't like hog look i'm not gonna lie i don't like hog being able to run around while healing but you can't double nerf a hero like that because you'll end up dumpstering the hero you have to look at how they initially react I want to big dumpster major them, changes in the game and make educated decisions after hey, i want to i'll, I'll fucking put that, him in the hole jumping the gun and dumpstering a character and you don't want to do that that's not good game design that's really really bad you, you just you want to avoid doing that at all costs so we take each hero step by step analyze how it how it reacts in the game take is look at how it plays and then make an educated decision after the fact we cannot jump the gun and over dumpster a character that's really really shit can we not i mean i would Reduce like to diva armor by 100 replace it with health yeah so that's fair she is now 400 health 200 armor because she's three she's half and half right now yeah, it's it's actually wild to me that most of the off tanks or hog and diva are, are have more health than uh there you go guys than the main tanks. I know the main so, tanks have armor, but Ryan armor is kind of a joke. Worried, I, I am a little worried. Winston armor is a joke too. Sigma. It's gonna be headshot through fortify. Yep. Barrier health to eight hundred from six hundred. Fortify thirty is twenty percent instead. Twenty is a little low. I would say thirty percent incoming. Damage. Twenty twenty, I think, would kill it. This is a this is a this is a certified or is a hater. Say, to top this off, bear, I might reduce barriers cooldown by one second. Well, actually, hold on. I know how I want to do this. Here's what we're going to do instead. Coming damage, and then we're going to do this. For, um, it's like we're in sync. So the goal of this change, this makes it so that Arissa, as long as she kites properly and, and tries to get out of fights, right? she can still be played it's like we're fucking in sync on Arisa with rush or with Don i did not watch this beforehand i intentionally said i'm not watching this last night so i can watch it on stream so we could have live reactions if this doesn't teach you that most high level players are interconnected brain wise on game balance i don't know what else will five or you get around her you actually have a chance to kill through her abilities right and then CD increase by two seconds from 10 to 12. So Fair. the goal of this Perfect. is to enable bunker again, right? This is going to make Arissa have downtime. So you actually have to play smart around walls, around barriers, and that you have to be smart with your cooldown usage so that 
they don't just win for you, right? This enables the bunker play style, which means they'll still be viable on first point defense maps like King's Row. You could play her on high ground there. You could play her on Anubis. You could play her on the, all the traditional Thank bunker you. maps. That's she actually would be better stretch. to enable it a different play style of comp. Players. And Chat, you could play dive into it match. And get top 500 you too. Hey. Win, but you don't inherently win. Like it's whoever sets up well, whoever actually uses cooldowns properly. The fun chess of Overwatch that made everyone fall in love with this game. It's what made the game so great. It's what made the game game of the year. There were all these options that if you messed up, you could really look internally and say, damn, like I misplayed that. It's not that he has a bullshit ability that's just too strong. It's, well, I could have, I need to do this differently. I need to do this differently. It's not I press fortify and I'm unkillable if I have a support alive. It's okay. I can force fortify here. If I want to attempt to kill her through this, I can. She doesn't reduce that much damage. I can aim for the head. I have options as a player. There's all these different ways a fight can play out. And it actually allows bunker comps, traditional bunker, to be played, not annoying ass double shield. So I think that's a good way to take Arissa. I think you make her more of the bunker tank that allows her to play solo play styles a little bit more, but also enable the team like this not some body isn't that how they want the game now though uh i mean that's not how it is though right now so brawl tank where they just they just really did you know with this youtube not think anything uh only if sam only if sam wants yeah. me to the problem with okay with has it. always otherwise been this is his content this is me reacting to it live that, I'm so, like, at worst this is a, a change that will make her not be that viable but her pick rate is so low and she's not that liked as a hero but either way i think sigma is so strong that you can stack him with her and she'll still be good on the maps where that's that's key they, they, that's something that needs to always be remembered is hero dynamics. Dynamics of it. So oh, they're better for the community. A, as long as you're cool with it, Sam, I can do it. I wasn't. I was. That was not my plan, though. I did not want to take your content, but if yeah, if you're cool with it, appreciate it, buddy. Because I mean, to be honest with you, this needs to. This everybody needs to fucking say something, dude. Like, because this is ridiculous. We're the last balance patch we had was August 9th. The bunker is really, really strong, which is where she's pretty much where she should be played anyway. So, all right. Now, this is where it gets tricky, chat. Sigma, okay? True. Sigma is a really tough character to look at. I think he does too much at once. I, I don't want to remove Grass from the game, even though he would still be really good without it. I think... Does his shield recharge while he's grasping? Well, hello. <laughs> it should, right? Okay, so now we grasp. Yeah, it starts. Yeah, so it does. The, you need to delay the regen on his shield. You need to reduce his uptime. Okay, I have a really hot take. Okay, it's a two part. One, you make Winston do damage to all barrier, deployed barriers and electronics. So, Orissa shield, Winston bubble, Sigma shield, Sim turrets, Torb turret. Anything that's a deployable object that's electronic doubles doubles damage against it. One. Or, alternatively, you remove Sigma Shield entirely and you bring back his one-shot. You make it so that he can one-shot people again, just like when he was first released. So he's more of an off-tank character. Increase his health by about 100. Bring him more in line with like where Zarya slash Hog slash D.Va is. And make it so he doesn't have a barrier. So that would be a good either way to or start. is so my take on how you get rid of double shield. Okay. While whilst grasp is active, shield regeneration timer does not does not start. So basically, if you use grasp, you actually have to pay a price for it, right? What makes Sigma so dumb to duel against right now is that he can do everything. He can proc his grasp. And his shields automatically recharge while he's doing that, mm -hmm. which dramatically increases his uptime. And what was so frustrating and what made double... And here's the thing that is really important. Watch this from... Again, watch this again really quick. When Sam does this, okay? D does his shield recharge while he's watch this. It's Now, typically when you duel a Sigma, I'll show you what happens. Well, hello. <laughs> okay, so now we grasp. He calls his shield. Now, most of the time, Sigmas will call their shield back then take a little bit of damage, right? And then when they take about half damage, then they'll, they'll grasp. Watch this thing right here. Sam immediately went from uh, a shield to grasp. 
And right when the grasp is finished, it's already recharging. Now, if you play that like most high-level players play it, where they'll have the shield up, call it back, then they'll have no shield in front of them, they'll just do normal damage, take some damage, take about like you'll start getting they'll start getting shot at. Then they'll start popping their 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 suck. So they'll pop the suck, they'll absorb incoming damage, which will give them arguably somewhere between 100 200 effective HP. The suck finishes, they'll get somewhere between about 100 200, if they really fucked up a couple hundred HP. So now he's recharging his shield, his, his 100 shield that's on the top here, because just like Zarya, it recharges over time without taking damage. On top of that, we'll have overshield. So the overshield's taking the damage as he's getting shot at. As he's getting shot at, this starts to recharge, and of course, he'll probably be getting healed from his team. And all that time, this shield is recharging. So once this shield comes down, and he'll start taking damage on his actual HP again, shield's back up at least minimum four or 500. At minimum four to 500. He can sit there all day long. He sits there all day long. It's too many things at once. Yeah, it starts so active. Shield regeneration. Uh, we're a little bit further out, right? Now is that he can proc his grasp yeah. and his shields automatically recharge while he's doing that, which dramatically increases his uptime. And what was so frustrating and what made double shield so good, and this is what the developers did not understand, no matter how loud the contenders players and pro players screamed at them, myself being one of them, is that what made double shield so broken was never the barriers it was the sustain abilities that allowed arisa sigma and bat i told you i promise i did not watch this ahead of time i promise you i did not watch this ahead of time app to, to synergize to a point where they had 100 percent uptime right dive Always had downtime. If you jumped in, you would be punishable for misusing your cooldowns if you went in too deep. If you play Rush, Reinhardt's shield is finite, right? He can't shoot from range. You have to make smart decisions. That's what made the game so much fun. But with Sigma, you essentially were able to have 100% uptime, which made the character unpunishable. So it doesn't matter how smart you were at, as, at, at the character, how good you were at the character. Its skill floor was automatically <sighs> higher because the hero just allowed you to have 100%. You guys got to be twin separated at birth or something? It's But it's not just us two here. You have to understand, most of the high-level community, if not all of it, all thinks the same way. They're just not loud about it. That's it. If you don't think your favorite high-level streamer thinks these same things, or at least a variation of the same things... I, you're wrong. They just don't want to talk about it because some of them have been here for three, four, five years and they don't care about talking about it anymore because they don't get listened to. And uptime. There should not be a character in this game that has 100% uptime. If there is a character that has 100% uptime or near it, true, Sam. True. Ends up being three years of screaming. The most consistent things in this game have always dominated the game. That's why Brig is so good, right? She like literally has such a huge range with massive uptime and peeling whilst healing, which has just been proven to be fundamentally broken for the game. Like if, if your hero fundamentally and the fundamentals are the ability synergizing together or stacking at the same time, doing more than one thing at once. For example, Sigma can grasp and regen his shield, and then he can go back to shooting and shielding at the same time. And by the time you break his shield again, he's going to have grasp again, and it's an endless cycle. Heroes that fundamentally operate like that have all will break the game, and it's been proven that they do that. So you want to reduce that in your game so that you add healthy counterplay in the game. The game doesn't feel oppressive to play. Heroes feel equally matched, and it's about how you play rather than what you pick, and that's what makes Overwatch so brilliant. So I think um, this would be a nice little minor nerf to Sigma that wouldn't dumpster the character, but it definitely helps reduce that 100% uptime so that you actually have counterplay and fun ways mm -hmm. to play the game, better ways to outplay him, et cetera, et cetera. That's why Brig never had downtime. Well, Brig has downtime, but like it's Brig's fundamentals is not her downtime because Inspire's only up about 40 to 50, maybe 55% of the time if you're playing really well. 
it's that she heals and peels at the same time, and that's what makes her so broken. Yep. You can't have Bingo. a hero do both. Like, Ana has to choose to sleep dart someone or to heal her team. And that decision-making is what makes players like ML7 the best players in the world because they understand exactly where they need to play, who they need to heal, when they need to peel, when they need to sleep, when they need to nade, and that makes the skill ceiling almost... In, like, expo it, it makes the skill ceiling ex literally Very exponentially true. higher, which makes people want to continue to grind the game to achieve perfection, right? And and to achieve skill and fair play, and it's just fun to play that way, and it's not fun to play a watered-down, boring game. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do to Sigma. I don't want to ramble too on too much about him. All right, who's next? There. Yeah, and, and wait, can I? Yeah, yeah. Also, shield drops while grasping. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. Shield is forcibly dropped while grasping. I think... I think we just do this. We can we can take that out, actually, and, and do just do these two things. We don't have to increase the regeneration cooldown. If it forcibly drops while grasping and the regeneration timer doesn't start, that, that will give him downtime, which means he actually is killable. So, yeah. We might need to increase Shield's health a little bit at some point to compensate but i don't think we need to do that right now i want to wait and see what happens so i'm it's a good question i'm talking to my girlfriend about this right now and she's talking about how balance the game from the top down leaves lower level players in the dust and high level players just want to have their way could you help me explain how balancing the game this way is good for everyone it's a competitive game if you take it at the top at the absolute highest level a game can be played if you know that they can't go higher than that ceiling then they can't break and take over the entire game nothing is worse nothing is worse than when a hero is so broken they literally dictate your entire team so like so let's say you're a tank player right let's say you're a tank player and back in goats if you didn't pick brig you lost i can tell you that even even though like even though you could swap at the time which you can't anymore by the way uh if you didn't have a Brig, you lost the game. If nobody wanted to swap Brig, and let's say you were the only main tank player on your team, and no one would swap, you just lost because they picked the hero, and they were good at it, and they took over the whole game, that feels terrible. Now, by having a game balance from top town, it rewards you for being good at the game. If you are not good at the game, you should not be had your hand held. Not everyone is allowed to be GM. GM is reserved for the top players. Those 1%, those people at the very, very top. The top 500 leaderboard can't be everybody. It's the top 500 players. It's supposed to be a reward for the top level. Those people, no offense, if you, there's someone that sits at home and plays 12 hours a day in scrims and everything else, to improve and grind and they review and they get coaching, they deserve to be at the top. If you just play a few hours after work after every week, nothing's wrong with that. You can have fun the same way, but you do not deserve to be in that same game as them and beating them if they are that much better than you. The skill should reflect that, wow, holy shit, they are fucking good. And balancing top down reinforces that because it gives you something to work towards. It has people competing. It has people going to the point where if you're mastering something and getting so good at it, you should be beating people around you. It rewards you for putting in the effort as opposed to rewards you for just playing the correct hero. <sighs> All right, let's continue. I'm also not nerfing Zen because if you nerf Zen's ability to get peeled by a lot of these characters, it actually makes him a little bit more balanced. So again, you don't want to nerf Zen yet because he's only really strong because these two characters are just fundamentally overpowered as fuck. So if you nerf these two characters, it makes Zen as punishable as he should be, and it makes the game a lot more balanced. I honestly might wait on the Hanzo changes, but I want to reduce Storm Arrows just in case. Um, and I also want to do this to Lucio. Let me let me check his. Are we buffing his his range, his, his aura? It's gonna be pretty important because if we remove the peel ability of uh of Brig and Bap or we reduce it, Lucio should be able to be that peel character in his own way. Nerf Discord, but but I said this earlier. Zet, I think Discord's way too strong. 
But Zen is supposed to have the weakness of a glass cannon. He's not a glass cannon. He's a fortress. So he just unadulterated, pure, raw, destructive power. And you can't punish it. If you took away the ability to keep him alive like that, it might make him balanced again. Okay. That's what Sam's saying. 16 a second to... But again, that's where we all come around is. We all have the same exact ideology. We know what the problem is. We're just... The only, thing, the only difference is, is how we want to approach it and how we're allowed to approach it. <clears throat> There's very small differences. This is where it gets tough. This is where it gets real tweaky. I'm not going to overbuff this because we already buffed the radius. Mm. Need this a video, please? Yeah, Sam said that I can make it a video, so I'll make it a video. video. I wasn't going to, but this. he's cool with it. We're gonna increase the radius for now, and that's all we're gonna do. We're we're gonna we. I don't want to mess with numbers fire. because we're giving. This is big utility right here, right? You, I, I I actually think this is this is absolutely genius. You know why? Before he even says anything, one of the favorite ways Lucio players like to play is more Reddit. They like to play aggressive. They like to get up in their face. But you leave half your team behind, and Briggs' radius is like double the radius of what Lucio is at this point, anyways. So if we showed that R Brig is way more healing than Lucio does too, why 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 not expand it a little bit? You know, if it works for Brig and Briggs is broken with way more healing, Lucio's underpowered healing having a bigger effect, I don't think will will be that different to a gameplay, but it'll be massive for Lucio players. You don't. It's really risky to mess with you. How big is the radius right now? That's a great question. Let me show you. So this is um, Lucio versus Brig. The green is Lucio's crossfade aura. Uh, Brig is the orange. Now, don't forget, you have to be in the radius of orange to proc Inspire. But you can actually leave this area, the LOS, and it will linger. It actually goes even further that if Brig dies while she's procked in Spire, the heal sustains further. Make sure you're saying volume. Uh oh you oh because like okay so you're right you're right like the volume of this like it extends this high up as well. Yes, right. Yeah. You're right Sam. You're my my mistake on this too. It's not only just the area, it's all it's the entire bubble. You know? So if you like even a fair that's way the fuck over here or an echo as well. Um if it break dies, by the way, the heal still goes. It still lingers even more. Um, you just have to be in this range to proc the healing in the beginning. Uh, and this is from Violet, by the way. Inspire triggers in waves, so even on death, a wave of Inspire will still complete. So, yeah. This is the difference between the two. Uh... It's insane. It's, it's, but I mean, like, I know if this is in video format right now for just video people, because I've, this is live on stream as well. Sam's in my chat and Violet's here as well. The entire chat's reaction of going, oh my Jesus, is probably your reaction. As if you're a more casual or um, someone who just like plays the game competitively a few hours after work or, you know, on the weekends, whatever it is that this photo is probably very shocking to you. And it should be. Because that's fucking ridiculous. <clears throat> Anyways, though, let's continue. Ability and mess with numbers at the same time, because that's how you can accidentally break something and make it overpowered as fuck. Maybe, so maybe, Sam. This. this is this is going to take time, so we're going to wait and see how this patch reacts, and then if we need to do this again, we will, but I don't think we need to yet. I, I, I agree. I don't think we need to right away. Seeing how that plays, because this could end up being a very big buff. It doesn't look like it, but again, this makes him much more consistent, and consistency is the best thing in this game. Cannot iterate that enough. Consistency and cons consistent AOE heals. The characters have always been the characters that get picked. Wait, what would you so, say? What'd you say? Best thing in this game. Cannot iterate that enough. Consistency and consistent characters have always been the characters that get picked. So, 
we're gonna move on so okay i think that's it for now i mean i don't think there's any other big changes that i would want there's 10 more minutes initially. i think this would open up the game a ton um we might need to revert the Zarya nerfs. I'm thinking about that. I think I I, I want to revert the Zarya nerfs because I think that Diva would just be broken. Like even if we nerf Diva, I think Zarya could use a little bit to compensate. Um, just True. to enable the rush comp and enable Reinhardt a little bit more. I think we could see some counterplay. But I because Ryan Diva is way better than Ryan Zarya right now. I'm also gonna wait on that a little bit because it, it Briggs Briggs Zen and Bap Zen don't dominate the game. It opens the door for Zarya. still unsure on Arissa Sig. Okay, so let me let me give my take really quick on Arissa Sig. I think the Sig one's, and I already gave my my other take of how I think Sig, you could remove his shield entirely, give him more HP to compensate, give him a little, like, more damage with a one-shot, kind of in line with, like, Hog, and that's one thing. But Orisa though, way back when, we're talking, like, season 15, Orisa used to move very fucking slow when she shot. She was supposed to be a bunker tank, used in, like, Bastion comps and holding first point King's Row high ground and stuff. Then they tried to make her fun and cool and made and, and, and increase the speed at which she moves while shooting by like 50% or 100%, something crazy. And they made it so that she was much more mobile and she could play aggressive and she could play attack. Back in like season 14, offensive Orisa didn't exist. It wasn't even a thought process in any player's head. Now it's pretty normal. I would revert everything back to that time. Revert it so she moves slow as fuck while she shoots. Bring back old pull because that was something that people really enjoyed with Hog, uh, the oink and yoink, and being able to pull people in the in the in the, in the hole on Ilios well. Make her shield 900 HP again. Make her not as tanky as a tank. Like you can, you, I don't remember what her fortify was, but her fortify was terrible. Like, like it made like obviously it was it was a good CC and it, like it helped kept her alive, but it wasn't like broken like it is now like she doesn't take headshot damage still 40 percent. she just fucking ah, just sits there just takes everything you know back in the day she was only picked on maps like junker town on on ilios well stuff like that now I, I can see her getting picked on havana on junker town and ilios well and then in defensive situations like king's row first where you have to hold the point with like a bastion comp or something crazy right those were times where Arissa was so good, but everywhere else she was supposed to be terrible, and that was okay. But they made her a viable everywhere. Nambani first point defense. Yup, another one. There were so many instances where they were supposed to make it so like she was like locked down, don't move. You know, uh, I think of like um, Command and Conquer where they used to have the artillery batteries that like to use them. They had to set up and like two giant tr like legs came out the back and like implanted in the ground and it couldn't move, but it was an incredible cannon once you got it set up. That's what Arissa was supposed to be. Hard to displace, but once you displace her, she's fucked. But they took that away and they made her, her able to move and do the same shit, but just not as well. And I, I don't know. I never was a fan of it. Cold roll. I appreciate the prime. Thanks so much, dude. Paris first, Horizon first. I think those were after. I think Horizon first, yes. Paris first, I think, was after. That was after the, the change. But same stuff, you know what I mean? It was all it was all around that time. And I think I think going away from that style to make everything... Because that was when they were really trying to make every hero playable all the time. And that's when, like, Sim was getting reworked. And Torb even got a rework, even though I don't even really know if he really needed it. I actually like New Torb better, I think. Um, but regardless, though, like... That was when they were just changing everything. They were just like, oh, we got to change the whole game. Just change everything. Like, Brig is, too, Brig is taking over. Like, we got to change everything. Goats is taking over. You know, like, everyone was crazy. Nepal Sanctum, actually. Yes. Nepal Sanctum. You know, I used to watch, I used to watch, like, uh, XQC on Nepal Sanctum. Shoot the pole into the hole. Happy uh, and, and, and you could just fucking yoink them from the stairs. Say, and they I never even saw it. Norica. It was, it was so cool. Like, you could do all these, like, fun pulls and stuff like that. And, like. It was actually like part of the hero kit, but then it became broken in season 17, 18 because you had like Doom Pull, uh, May, because like then they were playing goats as they were rushing, but then had this crazy pull ability as well. It was just like, <sighs> I don't know. I, I hated the way that I hated the way that they took it after that. Handsome, by the way, thinks the two for 17 months. I just, I think that was a major mistake. Uh, apparently the rest of this is just kind of like recapping everything again, so that's fine. Uh, I'll take Sam's word that that was the most of the chunk, but 
listen, real talk. It's been today is November twenty eighth. Also, by the way, I don't know why YouTube got rid of the dislike button. I think that's stupid. November 28th, and we haven't gotten a balance patch since August 9th. And I think that patch was Genji Doom. Uh, I don't remember what else. It was like four changes. I don't think any of them were tank changes. We haven't had tank changes since like June, and it was like hog. We haven't had... Ryan got nerfed back in like April. So. Thank you for this. We need you in. So. If we're going to go another year without content, we're going to figure this shit the fuck out. That's all I'll say.